going to let everyone to take a minute to guess what the best-selling Nissan of all time in Canada is. It's not the Frontier pickup or the Hustler before it. It's not the Pathfinder SUV, which is one of the first Nissans we ever saw in Canada. It's not even the Rogue Crossover. I thought for sure it would be that one that they sells in droves, but it's not. The highest selling Nissan ever in Canada is actually this, the Sentra Compact. They've sold something like 330,000 of these since 1990, and, and that's pretty impressive. Of course, back in the 90s, you'd sell more sedans on a per-sale basis. CUVs hadn't quite arrived yet, um, so when you want affordable motoring, this is how you'd go. But the fact that it's managed to keep that mantle even now that all these SUVs and CUVs have arrived is pretty impressive. I think the Sentra has really always kind of gone gotten by on, on actually the Nissan's kind of coolness factor. Think of cars like the original Pulsar or its, or its uh, kind of shooting brake uh, twin. Think of the Pathfinder and its crazy triangle side wind, triangular side windows and its optional two-door configuration. Even the stuff like the, the, the 370Z sports car and all of its precursors or the GTR, which is like the most cultish car of all time. It's, it's, it's always... You never think of that kind of funkiness like in the city of San Francisco when you think of the Honda Civic or the Toyota Corolla. It's gotten better, but it's never been like quite like what Nissan's able to do with the Sentra. And for 2020, the Sentra is all new and it looks even better now. It's especially an SR trim, which is what I have here. Awesome 18-inch wheels. That was not such a great blue paint, which kind of looks like that base side blue that um, you know the, the GTR has always kind of made so popular. Uh, 18 inch wheels, like I said, it's got different rocker panels. It's also got the most aggressive application of the Nissan V Motion Grill we've ever seen on a Sentra, and all that is awesome. The theme continues inside: flat bottom steering wheel, cool kind of faux carbon fiber touches here and on the gauge cluster here. Uh, these three vent roundels are actually designed borrowed from the GTR. Contrast color stitching on the seats. It's kit, the theme continues in here, which is awesome. Speaking of the interior, the front seat is actually roomier than both the Corolla or the Civic. Fortunately, the back seat is snugger than both, so, you know, something had to give somewhere, right? Uh, so that that's awesome. And they, it's not, but it's also not just about the numbers. It's about how they use it. The seating position, for example, is right on for the driver. The steering wheel falls nicely into my hands. I know I said that with the G70 last week. The steering wheel falls nicely into my hands. The seat is comfortable and it's keeping me supported. It's really, really great. And not to mention that, it's also got great storage up in here, too. So while the numbers say one thing, is how you use that space that matters. The center console, which looks really low profile and narrow, and, and wouldn't, that wouldn't be that deep. It's actually quite deep. I was surprised I opened it to see it could probably fit a four ga ga gallon, uh, four liter rather, four, yeah, four liter uh, jug of milk down there. Uh, this sunglass holder looks like it's big enough to hold one of a pair of Elton John sunglasses. And you've got a nice big glove box as well. Too. Also, you've got this um, nice pad here for your cell phone. Cell phone, says cell phone mobile device unfortunately it's not a wireless pad it's not even available on the nissan which is too bad because both the uh corolla and the civic do offer that option and with a car like this which is kind of aimed at a more kind of youthful buying group those that that group loves its tech loves its 4g you know wi-fi hotspots you know and it loves its wireless charging this doesn't have that you've still got carplay and android auto though which is good but that's too bad that you don't have that um but it's good that you have that storage area for your for your mobile because that that means you don't want to waste one of these cup holders on it here too. So that's that's really really good. In the back, the seats fold down by just tugging on uh, the um, a lever on the shoulder. You don't have to go through the trunk to do it. And while you're not going to want to fit two adults back there for too long, how many adults are riding around the backseat of compact sedans in North America all that much? Not that many, I'll tell you that. What you want to be able to do, though, is make sure you can fit a child seat in there, and you can quite easily. While there might not be that, as much room back there as there is in the Corolla and the Civic, the door, the rear door opens nice and wide, so getting a child seat in there is no problem. I actually tried it uh, with my two-and-a-half-year-old daughter, and no problem at all. Not only getting the child seat in there, once it was in there, getting her in there, too, was no problem. So that that was really nice. So they've, made, they've done well with that. Even with that kind of aggressively sloping roof line, uh, you can get a child seat back there, which is which is great. So so they've really done well to make use of the space they've given. Uh, Power-wise, it's got 149 horsepower and 145 pound-feet of torque. That is... Um, pretty good for stock. The It's more than what the Corolla makes in stock. And it's also um, more on the torque front than what the Civic makes in stock. Now, you can get more powerful engines in both the Corolla and the Civic. You can, both, you can get a turbocharged engine in the 
uh, Civic, and the Corolla also gets a 2-liter engine in addition to its 1.8 liter, which it gets in stock. So it's a shame that you can't get a more powerful motor, I guess, with the Sentra, but the fact that at base you, you get that kind of power is great because with the Corolla, you have to spend about $25,000, I think, for the LE trim in order to get that kind of power, to get the 2-liter motor and the more power that, that, that it offers. This starts at 1899 18990 I believe um, and it gives you that power right from base it also does it all through a CVT transmission CVT transmission which is actually not too bad I know I'm gonna make fun of it but Nissan has worked on their CVT tech for a long time now and they do they do it well they do it well so it's it gives you a little bit of zippy power you're not gonna really have the same launch as you get from the CVT on the Corolla though because that actually has a traditional first gear which helps with launch this doesn't have that so that's that's one of the Corolla kind of an ace up the sleeve that it has so but it's it's not bad and also when you're asking you can get some stuff going too what I have a harder time forgiving though is the fact that not only can um, I not I, I can't uh, shift my gears and paddles up here. I can't even use uh, shift uh, my own gears with the uh, shift lever here either. Now, of course, CVT doesn't really have actual gears, but there's been plenty of CVT transmissions in the past, including ones from Nissan itself, that have given us the op option to kind of shift gears on our own by programming in like virtual shift points. Would have liked to have seen that for this vehicle, which is meant to be a little more kind of, you know, athletic. And to make things worse with the SR trim, you can't get a manual transmission. The base model has a six speed manual as an option. You can't even get that with the SR and that is too bad because I think that'd be a really good pairing and I wouldn't be surprised I'm going to say I'll bet they'll, they'll, they'll give us a manual I think they will I'd like to, I think they'll do it I bet you maybe next year for 2021 when they kind of do a bit of a refresh maybe they'll maybe they'll add a manual transmission which would be great because if you could add a manual and maybe find a way to get a little bit more power out of that four cylinder up front there you could be talking about this on the same level as not just the Honda Civic, but the Honda Civic SI, kind of the sports version of the Civic as well. Maybe the Type R, that's kind of another level, but the SI, that'd be a really cool uh, comparison to be able to make. Um, this is not, not, it's not an SI, it's not a Volkswagen Jetta GTI, a GLI rather. It's, it's none of those things, but that doesn't mean that it can't kind of give you a little bit of fun and when it, and it does that by giving you a really really great steering rack very responsive incredibly pointable like 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 the, the small cars tend to have uh nice responsive steering racks because there's not as much weight for the uh to, to to move around but this one kind of takes to another level by really kind of offering you that side to side um quick uh evasive maneuver uh, ability that it offers is, is really awesome um and it's got even got some communication through this wheel too which i think is is awesome and not to be assumed that all um compact stands are going to offer that so it's got that the transmission and, and powertrain are are fine let's be honest 150 basically horsepower is all you're really going to need at this level again this is not a sports car so 150 horsepower for a car that weighs i don't know probably less than 2,000 kilograms is going to be fine it's going to work rather well and i don't feel like i'm in a slow car that's for sure um that's 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 not something that uh, i don't think many are going to the one thing you're going to want to watch for, though, if you do take one of these out for a test drive, is look out for that ride because while it does have that very responsive front end and body roll is kept to a nice minimum, the suspension is firm. The damper settings is quite firm. And unfortunately, it's going to make this video a little bit jiggly. Sorry about that. But but it is a very firm setup. You're going to want to watch that. You're going to hopefully try to find a road that's maybe got some expansion joints on it, some railroad crossings and so on. That'll kind of give you the feel for what that ride is going to be on a day-to-day. -day. Uh, but as you go through, as I go through this nice sweeper here, I like that. Like that's that's something that I'm really, really I'm a fan of. The steering here is really, really, really good. So... This is, uh, again, it carries on the theme of the Sentra. Nissan's always kind of having that that kind of slightly more performance bent to them. Uh, they've done a good good, good job uh, with, the, with the new Sentra to do that. Um, it's a very competitive category, obviously, the compact sedan one. Uh, the Civic and the Corolla sell in droves. So Nissan has done a lot to try to help the Sentra stake its claim at that level. Um, and I, uh, I think we'll be interested to see how it, how it does on, sale, on sales front. Let's see if we can continue. Uh, being the highest selling Nissan we've ever seen. So uh, that's it for now on this. Look for the full review here um, on wheels.ca in a couple of weeks. Um, you can follow me. You can follow me on Instagram. You can also follow me on uh, Twitter at uh, Dan the Wheelman. We really appreciate it if you do. 
but otherwise, uh, thanks for tuning in for this video. Next week, I believe in another Nissan, I think it's the Cash Guy Compact Crossover. Uh, so watch out for that video then, and thanks for tuning in this time.